You're listening to The Q Podcast. I'm your host, Kiana Canada, and this is where we delve into an intricate web of international and human rights law and policy. And I want you to join me as we explore the intersection of legal frameworks, sociological theories, and compelling stories that illuminate the realities of rights violations around the globe. So in this update, I wanna bring to you breaking news. So China has imposed sanctions on five prominent United States defense companies due to their involvement in arms deal with Taiwan. Now, these sanctions not only restrict the United States from selling firearms within China, but it also freezes the US government's assets within China. So it, before we get into the details of this particular story, it's important for me to say that while I hold a critical lens towards the foreign practices of the United States, my deep love for my country, the U.S., remains unwavering. My reporting is grounded in a commitment to human rights, and it's driven by the sincere desire to see the United States evolve into the exemplary leader it has the potential to be. In a previous video appearance, I expressed concerns about the United States' participation in conflicts emphasizing the importance of considering human rights. Additionally, in a written post, I raised awareness about the ethical implications of the U.S. government's gun contracts within the Middle East, highlighting the impact of the well-being of individuals in those nations. Um, it is deeply unsettling for me to witness the United States persistently partaking in the sale of hazardous weapons uh, to foreign nations. And this persistent behavior, I believe, demands a critical examination of the nation's commitment to global stability urging us to stand firmly against su such actions. And what I mean by stand firmly is that we have to use our voice to speak out against these actions. Now, you don't have to take my word for it. There is reporting on this, for example, uh, cruising reporting reported that China views recent arms sales by the United States to Taiwan as a blatant violation of the One China Principle, uh, with the spokesperson for the foreign ministry saying the United States' action to support Taiwan like arms sales and sanctions, quote, seriously harms China's sovereignty and security interests undermines the peace and stability across Taiwan Strait and violates the legitimate and lawful rights of interests of Chinese companies and individuals." Unquote. And uh, there is other reportings on this, but before I get to that, I want to say that the United States is spending trillions of dollars funding foreign wars and selling arms overseas. And I don't think that the United States is, the, the citizens of the United States is benefiting from these sales whatsoever. And to support that conclusion or to support that, that premise, all we have to do is look at the homeless population in the United States, which is increasing and increasing. And then we have poverty in the United States, which is also increasing. 
And in the United States, uh, if we look at certain countries, there are states that have, for instance, Texas, for example, um, states that have minimum wage, like Texas, between 525, 725, so as low, as 525 there are some states within the united states that has a minimum wage as low as 525 and states have it 725 and some are up but these trillions could be used to increase the minimum wage and to give every american the opportunity to earn a living wage which is, you know, in this day and age, like $18 an hour, $18, $19 an hour, that, that is probably going to be enough to get you an apartment. Um, it'll be enough possibly, I mean, if you're a single person, it'll be enough to get you an apartment. It, it, it may be enough to, so that you can uh, eat meals. And, and possibly pay your bills. Now, if you have a family, of course, things go up. But with trillions and trillions of dollars being spent abroad in wars, and not only in wars, but uh, selling arms, that money could be used to, to to actually bring each American up to a living wage of twenty dollars an hour. That money could be used to abolish poverty. It could be used to abolish homelessness within the United States. It could be used to abolish these two things. There is a large, a large homeless, it's like an epidemic. We have a, a homeless epidemic within the United States. The, the, Americans could use this money. There are people within the United States that are going days and days without eating. So there's hunger that's happening within the United States as well. And our country, what it wants to do is it wants to take the money from, it wants to borrow money and, and take takes its own money. So borrowing money from the World Bank and taking, taking its own money to fund wars and to And, and to sell firearms and, and to make profit off that, the United, the citizens aren't seeing any of that money whatsoever. All of this money is going into the pockets of our government leaders and it's going into the pockets of the gun lobby and the citizens are suffering from it. And we see this, of course, with these stories that continue to surface about firearm violence across the nation and and within our public schools. And it's quite unfortunate. Again, to support my statement that, or, or the premise that the United States is spending a considerable amount of money on uh, you know, selling arms, all we need to do is turn to reporting of Rojeev. And I may have butchered that name. If I did, I'm sorry. Is it Rojeev? But the Un- United States announced plans to approve a separate contract worth $440 million to Taiwan in June to increase the country's ammunition and repair parts for weapons and vehicles. 
So if you don't believe me, you can verify the accuracy of this story I did already. I've conducted a comprehensive fact check by cross-referencing information from reputable, <coughs> excuse me, reputable sources such as NBC News, BBC, First Post, We On, and Bloomberg, all of which independently corroborated the same details. However, it's up to you to form your own perspective on these critical matters. That has been our segment on United States, U.S. or China's sanctions on the United States. And I hope that you just continue to keep an open mind, form your own opinions, draw your own conclusions, uh, stay safe, continue to question, continue to use your voice to enact change. Until next time, see you.